Welcome to the FaithBridge Sermon Podcast. Be sure to keep watching immediately after the sermon for Postscript, a weekly podcast with in-depth content and answers to your questions submitted during the sermon. You can also find it on iTunes or at faithbridge.org slash postscript. Whether you are at the Klein campus, but the Woodlands coming to us online, whether you are just exploring Christianity for the first time, or if you've been walking with the Lord for many decades, we're glad that all of you are here and that you've chosen to worship at Faith Bridge today. We are going to be looking at a number of different passages of Scripture in the message today. So if you'd like, go ahead and pull out your Bibles. If you need a Bible, our ushers are coming down the aisle. Just raise your hand. They'll be glad to give you one. If you do not own a Bible, please accept this one as our gift to you. We would love for you to take that home and begin to read it and begin to make it a central part of your life. Before we jump into the message, let's take a minute and pray together. Father, how grateful we are for the privilege and the freedom that we have to gather here without fear, in complete uh, trust and peace, lifting up the name of your son Jesus, worshiping him in the power of your Holy Spirit. We pray now that as we turn our attention to your word, your Holy Spirit would be present among us to be our teacher and to guide us into all truth. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Well, if you've been here for the last month or so, you know that Pastor Ken has been sharing with us quite openly about the spiritual renewal taking place in his life, this renewed sense of connection that he has with God. And I'm sure you've picked up along the way the very... uh, personal nature of Ken's description regarding this renewal. He's not talking about some abstract idea. He's not talking about some uh, notion that he's become excited about. No, he's, he's talking about his actual living, ongoing relationship with God. And I know that it has been a source of encouragement for many of you. You've shared with me what it's doing for you in your own spiritual life. It's it's been an encouragement for me too. I've been all the more motivated to pursue God even more diligently as a result of Ken's testimony. As I have listened to Ken preach, though, I couldn't help but think about you, put myself in your shoes. You see, I, I have not always been a preacher. Uh, There was a day when I sat where you sit, and I can remember hearing sermons and testimonies like Ken's and thinking to myself, when is something like that going to happen for me? And perhaps the most puzzling aspect of those types of messages would be when the preacher would say something about hearing from God. You know, the, uh, the line like, uh, I just really felt like the Lord was prompting me to do thus and so. I sensed God was saying this. Uh, the Lord spoke into my heart. Phrases like that were completely mystifying to me. I had no experience of that and just wondered, what on earth are they talking about? A- a- am I just a, maybe a second-class Christian and only those in first class get the perk of actually getting to hear from God? What's the deal here with this hearing from God business? Well, that's what I want to talk about today, hearing from God. Does God, in fact, speak? And does he speak to everybody, or is it just a select few that get to have that privilege? And how does God speak? And how can I know, if I think God is speaking to me, that it really is God and not just my imagination or maybe even something Worse. Those are the kind of things we want to talk about today. My hope and my prayer is by the time we're done, not only will we have greater clarity around this topic, but even more importantly, I am praying, have been praying fervently, that as a result of our time together today, all of us will be more inspired, more motivated than ever to pursue God with our whole heart. So let's start with the most basic question of all. Does God, in fact, speak? 
Is our God a communicating God? Or is that just a nice, warm feeling that some people have? Well, if we accept the Bible as normative, as a book of truth, then the answer has to be absolutely, positively, yes, God does speak. I mean, from the get-go in the Bible, Genesis chapter 1, verse 3, we learn that God spoke creation into existence, literally, from the words of His mouth. Everything that is came into being. And then all throughout the Bible, we see example after example after example of God speaking with all kinds of individuals, godly persons and evil persons and everything in between. Sometimes God would actually speak using a voice. Other times, dreams and visions. Sometimes he would speak through his prophets, men and women that he had raised up to speak a special word to his people. In the book of Romans, we learn that God even speaks through the majesty of his creation, that he has not left himself without a witness in the world. But far and away, the greatest proof we have that God speaks is Jesus. Jesus. You know, in the Gospel of John, in that first chapter there, when John is introducing Jesus to the world... What does he call him? He calls Jesus the Word. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God and the Word was God. Jesus came to talk to us. Jesus came with a message. He came with the message of the gospel. Which simply put is, I've come here to earth, God in the flesh, because I love you. I desperately want to be in a relationship with you. And I'm looking for you because you've demonstrated that you haven't wanted to be in a relationship with me. No, all of you have turned your back on God. All of us have sinned, have chosen to separate ourselves from God and thereby justly deserved the punishment of eternal death. Eternity separated from God. But God didn't give up on us. No, he came in the person of his son, Jesus, proclaiming a message of salvation, of hope, of deliverance from our most basic problem, sin and eternal death. And Jesus didn't just come talking. No, he came full of action as well, teaching and healing and then ultimately giving his life for us, paying the penalty that we could never pay so that we might receive a gift we could never earn on our own, the gift of eternal life. When Jesus was raised from the dead three days later, he defeated death, and all of us who enter into a relationship with him enjoy the benefits of that victory over death. There's no question about it. Our God is a speaking God. Say, well, Pastor Dan, okay, uh, I can see how that works in Bible times, but what about today? Does God have anything to say in the 21st century? And again, my answer is yes, absolutely. He has a lot to say. The problem is we're not always hearing what he has to say. When I was in college, I took a speech 101 class. And in that class, we were taught that uh, communication has three fundamental parts. There is the sender, there is the message, and then there is the receiver. And communication occurs when all three of those are working as they should. Well, when it comes to hearing from God, we can be sure of a couple of things right off the bat. Number one, we can be sure that there's no problem with the sender. God, after all, created communication. It's His idea. So we can be confident that he's got that down. And therefore, I think we can also be confident that the message is in pretty good shape too. So that leaves what? The receiver, us. The problem when it comes to hearing from God lies with us, not with him or with his message. But it's that thing called sin. That thing that uh, separates us from God and creates a static, if you will, static on the line that just makes it ever so difficult 
for us to hear from God, for from us to hear accurately from God. So what are we to do? How are we to go about making sure that our receiver is in a better position, is healthy, is in fact able to hear what God has to say? Well, I want to give you three diagnostic questions this morning. I would encourage you to write these down, and in the coming days, come back to it and think about it some. Three questions that I think all of us at some point in time need to ask ourselves about hearing from God. And I believe the answer, the honest answer to these questions can tell us a lot about what's going on in our own hearts and about our ability to hear from God. And the first of those questions is this. We need to ask ourselves, are we really interested in what God has to say? Are we, in fact, really interested in what God has to say? Now, notice the question is not, are we interested in the novelty of hearing from God or the experience of hearing from God? I've met some folks along the way who really were more interested in hearing from God just for the sake of hearing from God just to have had that encounter with God. But that's not what we're talking about here. What we're talking about here is content. Are we really interested in the content of what God wants to say to our hearts, to our lives? I have to think that perhaps some of you ladies, particularly those of you that are married, can... uh, relate to God, maybe even empathize with God on this particular point. Maybe you've had the experience of your spouse saying, well, yes, I really want to hear what you have to say. I do. But when it comes to the actual delivery of the content, all outward evidence is to the contrary of really wanting to hear, especially if the TV is on. That can create a lot of problems. Are we interested in what God has to say? Several years ago, I was in India and found myself desperately in need of something to read. This was pre-Kindle days, and I had already plowed through all of the books that I had brought along on the trip. So I made my way down to a local bookstore. And I should have known better, but of course, after walking up and down aisle after aisle, I discovered every single title was in Hindi. Haven't got around to learning Hindi just yet. So somewhat dejected, I was leaving the bookstore, but then out of the corner of my eye, right at the door, I spied the one and only English title in the whole store. And it just happened to be written by one of my spiritual heroes, Dr. A. W. Tozer. And the title of the book was, God Tells the Man Who Cares. Now, Dr. Tozer was known to be a very powerful and a very straightforward preacher of the gospel. He was not a man who minced words. And in the opening paragraph of this book, Dr. Tozer states, God does not have anything to say to the frivolous man. Nothing to say to the frivolous man. In other words, God is not interested in a casual, half-hearted relationship. God is not interested in speaking to someone who is only halfway listening. No, God is interested in communicating with those who really care about what He's saying, who have demonstrated to Him, I'm interested. I want to receive what you have for me. Therefore, I am tuning in. I am paying attention attention. But that's not always an easy thing to do, is it? It's so easy for us to get distracted and get caught up in frivolous things. Now, what counts as a frivolous thing? Well, I suppose in one context, you could say anything next to God would count as frivolous. But I think Dr. Tozer was specifically getting at the cares and concerns and preoccupations that so often take up our lives unnecessarily. We get all caught up in making a name for ourselves. We get all caught up in making more money. We get caught up in pastimes. And these things occupy our heart and our mind, and there is very little space left over for anything that is coming from God. Now, perhaps you say, well, 
okay, Pastor Dan, I can see that God would be put off by frivolous things. But you know, the things occupying my heart and mind today aren't frivolous by any measure. I came today wondering if my marriage is going to survive the week. I came today having received a diagnosis from my physician that has me scared to death. I'm here today at Faith Bridge, sitting in my seat, acting as though all is well, but my heart is churning with desperation because I have a child who's making decisions that I can't do anything about, and yet I know that destruction is down the road. Those aren't frivolous things. Those are serious things, and they require my thought and my attention. Are you saying that because I have these serious things I have to think about that God doesn't speak to me? No, not at all. But you know, here's the one thing that frivolous things and serious things have in common. They both have the ability to capture our attention completely and leave no space, no room for hearing from God. And it just may be, it just may be that that serious thing in your life is exactly the thing God wants to talk to you about. He wants to talk to you about your marriage. He wants to talk to you about your health, about your child. But because you're so fixated on it and so consumed with it, you don't have the space to hear the good thing, the hopeful thing that God wants to say. God desperately wants to speak to each and every one of us. The question is, are we interested in what he has to say? The book of James tells us, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. God is looking for men and women who care about what he has to say. A second diagnostic question we should ask ourselves is, do we have the ears to hear? Do we have the ears to hear what God is saying? In other words, is our heart open and receptive to what God is saying? Is there a place in our lives where God's message can land and take root and begin to do what He wants it to do? This doesn't have so much to do with content as it has to do with impact. Are we allowing the words of God to make an impact in our lives? Are we acting upon them? Are they acting upon us and making a difference in our lives? There are any number of things in this world that can get in the way of receptivity. There are two that I have noticed that seem to be the most common. The first of those is unaddressed sin. Unaddressed sin. You know, it's, it's that sin that we just sort of tolerate, it's just kind of there. Maybe it's not out front and center. And maybe it's not a part of our life every single day. But it's, it's there. And we're tempted just to pretend maybe it's not there. Or maybe we like having that sin there. But like I said earlier, here's the problem with sin. It creates all sorts of static not so much creating a problem for God as creating a problem for us. It is denying us the privilege and the opportunity of hearing from God because we are permitting, we are allowing this stuff to be in our lives that God doesn't want to be there, that He knows isn't good for us. A while back I was moving through a, a spiritual dry spell, sort of the, the polar opposite, I guess you could say, of what Pastor Ken has been experiencing lately. I felt very disconnected from God. I was preoccupied with many things in my life and ever so slowly I was pushing God to the margins. And the net result was a prayerless life. And prayerlessness is every bit as much a sin as lying, cheating, stealing, whatever the case may be. But the Lord didn't give up on me, thank goodness. He doesn't give up on any of us. And He kept after me very persistently, trying to break through my unwillingness to communicate with Him. And He finally broke through 
in all ways through a podcast. In the mornings, I like to go for a walk, and I enjoy listening to different podcasts as I walk along the way. And on this particular morning, I was listening to a podcast about a man who was struggling with addictions. And one of his many addictions was an addiction to pot. He was quite frank about the fact that he just couldn't make it through a single day without having a joint. He had never kept it a secret from his wife or from his kids. They were all perfectly aware that this is something that dad does every single day. And in the course of the podcast, they were interviewing his now adult son. And that son was reflecting on a time years ago when they went on a family vacation. They drove out west, the mountains of California. And he said, at one point we came upon this lake. It was beautiful. It was a perfect day. It seemed like a great opportunity for us to go for a swim. So we pulled over. And everybody gets their swimsuits on and we're all about to jump in the water and have a great time when my dad says, wait, 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 wait. Before we go, uh, I've got to enjoy a little Berkeley gold. That will make it all the more special for me. And the son said, I remember thinking in that moment, really, dad, aren't we enough Isn't it enough just to be with us? Do you have to have that too? And in that moment, God said to me, Dan, aren't I enough? Do you really have to be preoccupied with this and that and the other thing? Isn't it enough just to come and be with me? There wasn't a doubt in my mind who was speaking to me. In that moment, and I sat down on the road right there in my neighborhood and repented and prayed. And the Lord restored the joy of His presence in my life. Sin can make it really, really difficult to hear from God. And even though we may be pretending it isn't there, God knows all along. Another static creating inhibitor in our lives is already having our mind made up. We may give the pretense of seeking God and saying, Lord, speak, give me your truth. I want to know what you really think about it. But in fact, we've already pretty well decided this this is what we're going to do. I mean, it's it's the equivalent of asking God for direction and then sticking our fingers in our ears. And friends, I can tell you this is dangerous business. Dangerous. In the book of 2 Chronicles, we read the story of King Ahab of Israel. Ahab was a bad, bad man for a whole lot of reasons. One day he decided that the thing to do was to take Israel into war with a neighboring nation. But those closest to him said, well, before we haul off and do that, shouldn't we maybe consult the Lord to see what he thinks. Let's let's get a prophet in here and see what the prophet has to say. And Ahab said, yeah, there, there is a prophet out there, but I hate that guy. And the reason I hate that guy is because he never tells me what I want to hear. He always tells me bad stuff. And they're like, well, you know, okay, maybe so, but I, I still, we really should hear from God. Okay, okay, bring him in. So they brought him in, and sure enough, the prophet says, don't go to war, because in the day that you do, you, Ahab, will die. Don't do it. And Ahab turned and said, see, what did I tell you? Every time. You can go and read the story for yourself. Every time we bring this guy in here, it's always bad news. Well, Ahab's not interested in what that prophet has to say. He goes to war anyway, and he tries to be sneaky about it. You see, in that day and time, when a country would go to war, the king would array himself in all of his splendor so that the troops could see him as a rallying point and remember, oh, yes, we're doing this for the king. But Ahab decided, okay, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to dress up like a regular soldier and just sort of hide out and see how things are going and then slip off the battlefield. And that's exactly what he did. But as he was leaving the battlefield, a random arrow 
pierced the one place in his armor that was exposed, and he died that very day. It is dangerous business to already have our minds made up as though we know better than what God would say to us. I can tell you out of my own life how dangerous a thing that is. Years ago, I was involved in a relationship with a young lady that could only be described as a toxic relationship. It wasn't good for me and it wasn't good for her. But somehow I got it into my head that this was the girl that I was going to marry. And even though there were plenty of warning signs all around, don't do this. And God was practically, I can see it now in retrospect, God was practically shouting at me through a bullhorn, don't do this. I had made up my mind. And so I just marched right ahead. And we got married. Which commenced the most painful years of our life culminating in an equally painful and sad divorce. Something that I never thought would happen to me. If I had only slowed down and taken my fingers out of my ears and said, Lord, I'm interested in what you have to say And not only am I interested in the content, I want it to impact my life. I could have avoided that painful experience. I tell my girls frequently, hey, you know, we can learn from mistakes two ways. We can either learn from our own mistakes or we can learn from the mistakes of others. We don't have to go out and do them ourselves. And so I'm saying to all of you this morning, learn from Ahab and me. Don't walk around with your fingers in your ears when it comes to God. Come to Him wide open, ready to receive whatever it is He has to say. It may not seem pleasant or what you want in the moment, but guaranteed it will always be best for you in the long run. Are we interested in what he has to say? Do we have the ears to hear? And then finally, does the message that we think we are hearing from God square with Scripture? Is it consistent with God's Word? God is never going to say anything to any of us that is contrary to His Word, to the Bible. The most readily accessible means we have to hear from God is from the Bible. In the Bible, God reveals to us truth about Himself, about us, about the relationship between us and God, about life in general. He intended for it to be truth in our lives. And so He's not about to say something to us that's going to cut against the grain of His already revealed truth. In my first church, I got a phone call one day from a man who needed to come in and talk, so we made an appointment. And on that day, he showed up, but he didn't show up alone. He showed up with uh, a woman who was not his wife. I thought, that's weird. But it only got weirder as it went along. (laughs) We sat down and began to talk. And uh, he said, Pastor, uh, we've really been looking forward to this opportunity to come and talk to you. Uh, We've been praying about something for a long, long time. and, And we think we are hearing from God, but we just wanted to run it by you first to see if we are in fact hearing from God. Well, I was very eager to hear. He said, you know, Pastor Dan, both of us are married to unbelievers. And and that was, in fact, the case. Neither of their spouses came to church, cared anything about spiritual things. And he said, that's just, uh, it's just a difficult burden to bear. And the more that we have prayed about this together, we just really feel like God is saying that what we need to do is leave our spouses and come together and begin to do ministry together. 
Well, at this point, I'm kind of looking around for the camera. <laughs> Somebody playing a joke on me? But they're dead serious. So, Pastor, do you think we're hearing from God? No! <laughs> no, you are not. I, I don't know who you're hearing from, but it isn't God. Well, they were sort of taken aback. I, well, gosh, I mean, you seem so sure of yourself. How do you know? Because God told us 3,000 years ago, thou shalt not commit adultery. It's one of the top 10. You don't do that. And God is not about to tell you to do something that is contrary to His Word. That's why Pastor Ken and myself and Ben and all the others who stand up here say over and over and over, read your Bible, study your Bible, meditate on your Bible, have your devotions, do your soap, study your Bible in your grow groups, familiarize yourself with the truth of God's Word. It is the most typical, accessible, and reliable means by which you can discern God's will for your life. You will hear from Him more from that book than from any other source. Nine times out of ten, when Pastor Ken or myself say something like, I sensed the Lord was saying, or I felt prompted of God to do thus and so, it has either come straight from the Bible or it was started somewhere in the Bible. If you really want to hear from God, read your Bible. So we've got these three diagnostic questions. Are we interested in the content? Do we have the ears to hear Will we let it make an impact? And does it square with God's Word? Well, I want to close with one other question. But this isn't a question for us. Uh, really, this would be a question for God. Let's just suppose that uh, one day, God has you on His mind. And by the way, He always does. He's thinking about you. And God asks himself, why should I speak to you? Would it in fact be reasonable for me to speak to you? Is there any evidence there whatsoever that you would be a good steward of what I might say to you? Or is this going to be a useless return on investment? God doesn't chat just for the sake of chatting. God's communication is always purposeful. It's going somewhere. It's doing something. It's making a difference. And if He's going to speak to you and me, He's going to do it when He's convinced, yeah, not only do I want to know what you have to say, not only am I going to let it make an impact, but I'm going to go wherever it tells me to go. I'm going to do whatever it tells me to do. I'm going to live on purpose on the basis of what you have revealed to me. You know, God is not doing a new thing, a spiritual revival in Pastor Ken's life so that he can stand here and talk about it and we can come here like spectators at a ball game and say, you go, Pastor Ken, and then leave the stadium and go back to life as normal. That's not the deal. God is speaking through Pastor Ken to you and to me. God is saying through Pastor Ken, I don't want to stop with him. I want to do a revival in your heart. I want to renew a connection with you and with you. I want to make a difference in Faith Bridge Church. I want to take this church to a place it's never been before. I want a people who will come to me and hearken to my voice and demonstrate to me, Lord, we will do whatever you call us to do. We will impact this community however you're calling us to impact it. We want to hear what you have to say. Amen. But that's not going to happen all by itself. No, it's going to happen when God's people decide, yeah, that's what I want. So I'm going to invite you to pray with me right now, right there in your seat. And we're going to pray 
and tell God how sorry we are that we haven't listened. And we're going to open up our hearts to what He has to say for us so that we might be the church that He created us to be. Father, we come before You this morning readily confessing to You how easily distracted we are. Frivolous things, serious things, and everything in between captures our attention. Sinful things. And we leave so little space in our hearts for hearing from you. Forgive us, O oh God. Forgive us for settling for the paltry things of this world. We want to hear, Lord. We don't want to just play church we don't want to just play at being a Christian. No, we want this to make a difference. We want to stand before you one day in eternity with the sure and certain knowledge in our hearts that we sought you with every fiber of our being and we became the man or the woman you created us to be and that faith bridge became the church you created faith bridge to be. Oh God, Speak into our hearts this day. Speak into our hearts as individuals, as men and women, boys and girls. Speak into our hearts as a church corporately and reveal to us your good and perfect will and give us grace to hear and to receive and to live what you give us. We offer our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Welcome to Postscript. I'm Lou Ann Riley, Grove Group and Discipleship Director, and I'm here with Pastor Dan, who just brought the message called, Can You Hear Me Now? What a great message on hearing from God. Thank you. Um, I love that you uh, address a lot of the questions that I think most people have uh, about mm. hearing from God. Does He speak and how does He speak? Um, there were a few questions that came in, Good. so I'm just going to jump right yeah, in. Yeah, sure. Um, so the first person asked, can I expect God to speak to me simply because I'm His child and He loves me? No other qualification needed other than belief in His Son? Well... Uh, I'll hone in on that word qualification. Okay. Yes. In, if we're talking about what qualifies you to hear from God, certainly being a child of God does qualify you. Uh, now, as to whether or not you will, that's another matter entirely. Um, I may be qualified to drive in the Indy 500, but there's no guarantee that I'm going to get behind the wheel. In a similar fashion, uh, it is perfectly possible for a person to go throughout their life not hearing from God, not because God isn't talking, mm -hmm. but because maybe they're not particularly interested in listening. Okay, so when uh, we're talking about this, there was something to clear up here. They said, maybe I misheard, but it sounded like what was being said was that God doesn't waste his time speaking to those who don't care or don't want to listen. Would that apply just to believers? How do you explain how he speaks to maybe someone who doesn't believe? Sure. Well, there is a distinction there. And admittedly, my sermon was primarily aimed at believers, people who should or do indeed want to know what God thinks. But there is a sense in which God does speak to everybody. Uh, there is a concept uh, found in Scripture. It, it doesn't go by this name, but it's there nevertheless. It's commonly called prevenient grace or going before grace. And it's the idea that God is constantly wooing and drawing everyone to Himself. The Holy Spirit is doing a convicting work in every person's heart. Obviously, not everybody responds. So in that sense, yes, God does speak to everybody. Where my sermon, uh, I think was a bit more um, focused was on 
once you become a believer and you have a vested interest in knowing what God thinks, these are sort of the uh, um, circumstances under which it will happen optimally. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Um, so the last question that came around, we talked about how when you're hearing from God, you gave the great example of the couple who came to see you um, testing against what you're hearing. And so one of the main ways that you do that is uh, a testing it against scripture. Um, and so if someone is not familiar mm -hmm. or is maybe new to the teachings of the Bible, uh, where do they begin to start and try to process this um, question, situations and things to see if it lines up with scripture? Well, I would suggest participating in our summer study that's a great idea. With Brian, mm -hmm. he indicated in the pre-service video that he was going to be looking at sort of the, the grand scope of Scripture. Mm -hmm. That would be a great place to start just to get an overview of the whole thing. Um, get in a grow group. Yep. That's what we do. Uh, that's what we do here. Start having daily devotion. I mean, there, there really is no substitute for just reading it. Yeah. You can go to Bible studies. You can be in grow groups till the cows come home, but until you pick it up and begin to read it yourself, um, it, it's not going to magically make, it way, make its way into your head. Yeah, um, just picking a, a Bible reading plan or a study Bible sure. or anything like that and beginning to yeah. start. And then uh, doing it in community is where you can come and say, That's help right. me understand this. That's right. Uh, what is God saying here? Yep. Um, so those are all great suggestions. Um, excellent message. Thank you. And uh, thank you for that and for the resources. You bet. Uh, thank you for joining us here for Postscript. We'll see you back here next week. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org slash postscript.